good morning and welcome to day 75 of Bible in a Year. As we go through the Bible, um, we're following the New International Version. We're going through it in 365 days and it's we've broken it up into different sections um, following the Adventure Timeline created by Jeff Cavins. Uh, and so the period that we're in right now is Desert Wanderings. My name is Pastor Jay Lutz. And today we're going to be going through Numbers chapter 29 to 30, Deuteronomy chapter 29, and Psalm chapter 113. A little bit about Numbers chapter 29 to 30 is, so last week we talked about three festivals, the three major festivals that all Israelites were to attend. Um, we talked about the first two last week, and then this week we're going to be covering the third feast um, that the Israelites were to attend. And this is the Feast of Trumpets. Um, this is a feast that was to celebrate the uh, coming in of the new year. Um, and it's, it's to remember the second coming of the Messiah. And then we follow into Moses speaks about the sacred assembly dedicated to sacrificing for the sins of all the Israelites. This was known as the Day of Atonement. This would be done once a year. Uh, we hear this uh, about this Day of Atonement uh, in the beginning of Luke with uh, John the Baptist's father, Zachariah, who he gives his, uh, his week uh, allotted for him to be the high priest uh, to give uh, all the sacrifices at the Day of Atonement. Uh, and then lastly, apart from the three major festivals, there's the annual festival um, of kind of like uh, what our neighbors to the south are celebrating this week, which is Thanksgiving. Um, there's a similar uh, celebration in the Old Testament, and this was known as the Feast of Tabernacles. So we'll be reading about that in Numbers. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 29, God informs the Israelites what the terms of this new covenant that they've accepted at Sinai and what that means for the people. Lastly, Psalm 113 is a Passover psalm known as being a, com a community hymns of praise. So this is a in the Psalms of Praise. And this was to be sung at the blessing of the first Passover cup of wine. So there was four cups of wine at the Passover uh, feast, uh, and this was to be sung before the first. Anyways, so we'll get into reading the full extent of it. Uh, we'll start with Numbers chapter 29 to 30. Chapter 29. On the first day of the seventh month, hold the sacred assembly and do no regular work. It is the day for you to sound the trumpets. As an aroma pleasing to the Lord, prepare a burnt offering of one young bull, one ram, and seven male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bull, prepare a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah, a fine flour mixed with oil, with the ram two tenths, and with each of the seven lambs one tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for you. These are in addition to the monthly and daily burnt offerings with their grain offerings and drink offerings, as specified. They are offerings made to the Lord by fire, a pleasing aroma. Day of Atonement. On the tenth day of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly. You must deny yourselves and do not work. Present as an aroma pleasing to the Lord a burnt offering of one young bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bull, prepare a grain offering and three tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, with the ram two tenths, and with each of the seven lambs one tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the sin offering for atonement, and the regular burnt offering with, with its grain offering and their drink offerings. Also, on this 15th day of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Celebrate a festival to the Lord for seven days. Present an offering made by fires, an aroma pleasing to the Lord, a burnt offering of 13 young bulls, two rams and 14 male lambs a year old, all without defect. With each of the 13 bulls, prepare a grain offering and three tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. With each of the two rams, two tenths, and with each of the fourteen lambs, one tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. 
On the second day, prepare 12 young bulls, two rams and 14 male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offering and drink offering according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering, and their drink offering. On the third day, prepare eleven bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offering and drink offering according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the fourteenth day, pr- prepare two bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offerings and drink offerings. On the fifteenth day, prepare nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offering and drink offering according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the sixteenth day, prepare eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bull, ram, and lamb, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat, a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the seventh day, prepare seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bull, ram, and lamb, prepare their grain offering and drink offering according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the eighth day, hold an assembly and do no regular work. Present an offering made by fire's aroma pleasing to the Lord, a burnt offering of one bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bull, the ram, and the lamb, prepare their grain offering and drink offering according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. In addition to what you vow in your free will offering, prepare these for the Lord at your appointed feasts, your burnt offering, grain offering, drink offering, and fellowship offering. Moses told the Israelites all that the Lord commanded him. Chapter 30. Moses said to the heads of the tribes of Israel, This is what the Lord your God commanded. When a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath to obligate himself by a pledge, he must not break his word, but must do everything he says. When a young woman, still living in her father's house, makes a vow of the Lord or obliges herself by a pledge, and her father hears about her vow or pledge, but says nothing to her, then all her vows and every pledge by which she obliges herself will stand. But if her father forbids her when he hears about it, none of her vows or the pledges by which she obliges herself will stand. The Lord will release her because her father has forbidden her. If she marries after she makes a vow or after her Lips utter a rash promise by which she obliges herself, and her husband hears about it but says nothing to her. Then her vows or the pledges by which she obliges herself will stand. But if her husband forbids her when he hears about it, he nullifies the vow that obliges her or the rash promise by which she obliges herself, and the Lord will release her. Any vow or obligation taken by a widow or divorced woman will be a binding on her. If a woman living with her husband makes a vow or obligation, obliges herself by a pledge under oath, and her husband hears about it but says nothing to her, and does not forbid her, then all her vows or the pledges by which she obliges herself will stand. But if her husband nullifies them when he hears about them, then none of the vows or pledges that came from her lips will stand. Her husband has nullified them, and the Lord will release her. Her husband may confirm or nullify any vows she makes or any sworn pledges to deny herself. But if her husband says nothing to her about it from day to day, then he confirms all her vows or pledges binding on her. He confirms then by saying nothing to her when he hears about them. If, however, he nullifies them sometime after he hears about them, then he is responsible for her guilt. These are the regulations the Lord gave Moses concerning the relationship between a man and his wife and between a father and his young daughter still living in his house. And ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 29. Chapter 29. These are the terms of the covenant of the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites of Moab, in addition to the covenant he had made with them at Horeb. Uh, that's Sinai. 
Moses summoned all the Israelites and said to them, Your eyes have seen all the Lord did in Egypt, to Pharaoh, to all his officials, and to all his land. With your own eyes you saw those great trials, those miraculous signs and great wonders. But to this day the Lord has not given you a mind that understands, or eyes that see, or ears that hear. During the forty years that I led you through the desert, your clothes did not wear out, nor did your sandals on your feet. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other fermented drink. I did this so that you might know that I am the Lord your God. When you reached this place, Sion king of Heshbon and Og king of Bashan came out to fight against us, but we defeated them. We took their land and gave it to, as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything that you do. All of you are standing today in the presence of the Lord your God, your leaders and chief men, your elders and officials, and all the other men of Israel, together with your children and your wives, and the alien living in your camp, who chops your wood and carries your water. You are standing here in order to enter into covenant with the Lord your God, a covenant the Lord is making with you this day, and sealing with an oath, to confirm to this as his people that he may be your God as he promised you, and as he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am making this covenant with its oath, not only with you who are standing here with us, today in the presence of the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here today. You yourselves know how we lived in Egypt, and how we passed through the countries on the way here. You saw amongst them their detestable images, and idols of wood and stone, of silver and gold. Make sure there is no man or woman, clan or tribe among you today, whose heart turns away from the Lord our God, to go and worship the gods of those nations. Make sure there is no root amongst you that produces such bitter poison. When such a person hears the words of these, this oath, he invokes a blessing on himself and therefore thinks, I will be safe even though I persist in going my own way. This will bring disaster on the watered lands as well as the dry. The Lord will never be willing to forgive him. His wrath and zeal will burn against that man. All the curses written in this book will fall upon him, and the Lord will blot out his name from under heaven. The Lord will single out from all tribes of Israel for disaster, according to all the curses of the covenant written in this book of the law. Your children who follow you in later generations and foreigners who come from distant lands will see the calamities that have fallen on the land and the diseases for which the Lord has afflicted it. The whole land will be burning waste of salt and sulfur. Nothing planted, nothing sprouted, no vegetation growing on it. It will be like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, whom the Lord overthrew in fierce anger. All the nations will ask, why has the Lord done this to this land? Why this fierce burning anger? And the answer will be, it is because this people abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the God of their father, the covenant he made with them when he brought them out of Egypt. They went and worshipped other gods and bowed down to them, gods they did not know, gods he had not given them. Therefore the Lord anger burned against them in this land so that he brought on it the curses written in this book. In furious anger and great wrath, the Lord uprooted them from the land and thrust them into another land, as it is now. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. As, as our second reading, our last reading is Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servant of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits on throne on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sets them with princes, with the princes of their people. He settles the barren woman in her land as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. Here ends our third reading. Uh, so this is uh, given during the time of Passover, uh, during the first cup, to bless the cup. Um, yeah, and we we bless, we are to give our blessing uh, to not only uh, receive from God, but we are to give the blessing unto others and in thankfulness for what God has given us. For uh, from the rising of the sun until the place sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So... Uh, at all times, in, while we are waking, 
we are to praise uh, God. Uh, and then it says, the one who sits in throne on high, who stoops down, who stoops down to look on the heaven and earth. So God, he is mindful of us. He raises the poor from the dust, the needy from its heap. He sets them with the princes. Uh, he brings life to the barren woman. Uh, God is to be praised for he looks out for all those, his children. And we see this in Deuteronomy with the uh, renewal of the covenant, uh, that if they do what is right in the eyes of the Lord, the Lord will walk together with them all the days of their life, and he will make things uh, prosper, uh, not just monetarily, but in their land, uh, with their people and their relationships. I mean, this is a wonderful thing when we walk with God. It's the wonder of God. Uh, we hear about these wonders also in the festivals. Uh, we talked about the three major festivals, and this time we talked about the third one, the Feast of Trumpets. And that is to welcome in, the, the Feast of Trumpets is when we are to welcome in uh, the Messiah in his second coming. This is this is the uh, to welcome Jesus when he comes in the clouds, is the Feast of Trumpets. And then we hear about the Day of Atonement. This was the day, remember that the two, there was the two sons of Aaron who disobeyed God and they were killed uh, in the tent of meeting. And so in order that nobody else would be killed, God made sure that they would set aside a time specifically to uh, sacrifice for all the people. And this was called the Day of Atonement. And this is when they would sacrifice for all people. Uh, and this is what was satisfied by Jesus. Jesus is our atonement. He His sacrifice atoned for all time and all places. So this is what this is replaced by. Jesus is the atonement. Uh, and then the Feast of Tabernacles aside, it's kind of like their three major festivals were the were the uh, Passover, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Trumpets would be kind of like our Easter and Christmas in Christianity. Um, whereas opposed, we also have other minor festivals like Thanksgiving. And, and this is also the same case. The Feast of Tabernacles was this the Feast of Thanksgiving uh, for the people of God. And then we hear about the vows given. Uh, and we, we God asks us to be very serious about the vows that we have, um, especially between the ones between us and our love, our spouse, and those between us and our parents. And so those are very important things uh, that we keep in good relationship with uh, those who are close to us. I mean, it says that when we come together, the two become one. And so we have to take that relationship very seriously because this is a binding covenant between us and them and God. And God just so wants us to prosper in our close relationships and that with our parents because that's the other closest relationship we will have in our and that's why he gives us the commandment to honor our mother and father uh, may we ever honor our father and mother may we ever love our spouse as ourselves uh, in order that we might be uh, fruitful in all that we have and that god might be the center of that all may you as you go through this bible in a year with me I pray that you would grow in wisdom and knowledge and the fear of the Lord and that you would be blessed through this. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.